Got a tragic here, and welcome to my latest mod for Tabletop Simulator. And we're starting out in the menu this time because it's just something I want to go over for this particular mod. This mod uses a setup script that determines what it does based on how many players you have seated. So when you create a game, if you're playing multiplayer, just start the game as normal and then don't hit setup until everyone has sat down at their seats. If you're playing solo, you're gonna have to use the new hot, feet, hot seat feature. <laughs> can't even speak. The new hot seat feature, which is an awesome new feature for solo players. Uh, I'm gonna set it to four players. And you'll load up a table like that and just load up the mod from the workshop or your save file or whatever. And just wait for it to load in. Once it has loaded in, it's a fairly heavy mod, like all my mods. Just click on the players and select your colors. Now it doesn't matter where people sit, they can see, like if you're playing a two player game, you could be any of these colors. I'm gonna choose purple, uh, red, blue, and orange. And then when you finish doing that, it's gonna pop up another save game. I don't know why it does that, just, uh, there's some kind of problem if you don't do it twice. So it's going to pop this up and then just reload the mod a second time and that'll get everything working. And that is it. And the whole point of me going through that, you'll notice that we are talking about Alien Frontiers here, by the way. But the reason I did all that is because you need to all be sitting in your seats before you hit setup. So if you're in a multiplayer, just start as normal, invite everyone to your game, after they sit down, hit setup. If you're playing solo, you have to set up a hot seat game and have all your players sitting at the proper seats you want. Otherwise the setup script won't work. And the setup script is pretty simple though. I've split the two expansions into three modules. You've got the outer belt module, the factions module, and the agenda cards. Everything is on by default. So if you want to get rid of something, you just click it and it will be out. Now, the agenda cards are these things up here. This is like a hidden surprise way of earning VPs. This is technically part of the factions expansion, but you, I've separated them because you can play that module with or without the faction card, the faction boards and so on. So just turn the red ones to red for the ones you don't want to play with. We're just going to have everything on for the demo and then I'll just zoom out so you can see the funkiness and you hit setup and it'll do everything required. You'll note that it also deleted all the tokens that are not used. I might just, uh, let me just quickly interface. Let me turn off tools and I'll scale the interface down a little just so there's more screen room for you. Okay, so now that the game has started, I'll just quickly go through how the game plays. And basically, for starters, every time your turn starts, it'll focus you on the, the mana rock, the die roller down here. And I'll get to that in a sec. You'll note that also, by default now, Tabletop Simulator has a card pop-up. See, so you, you know, you can drag cards straight out of the bottom of the screen. You can't turn that off by default. If you want to get rid of it, you just press the H button to turn it on and off. So whenever you start your turn, you'll get focused on the, the roller. I've also saved a hotkey, which is Shift 2, to focus in on the board a little closer. And that leaves Shift 1 not being used. It is currently set to a widescreen. So a good idea is, so we're playing as the purple player, is you just come over here and uh, set control one to set a camera there. So now you have the mana roller with space bar, shift two for the board and shift one for the player board. Anyway, so let's talk about the player board. It's pretty self-explanatory. Basically, if you've got the factions ticked, you'll have the faction board out 
plus the faction board that you're using, just the instructions for that board. Remember that all the faction boards have their own die dock position. So don't forget that you can dock die there as well, because it's sort of a bit out of the way. Secondly, you'll have the activated cards board. Okay, this is where you play cards as you activate. So you've got your hand, and when you play a card to activate it, just dump it on the table, you know, and that's about that. So you can't use that card again until you put it back into your hand. Now, uh, I might at some point do a script to automatically pick these up at the beginning of your turn, but I haven't yet. So let's talk about this thing here. This is the resource counter. You can see that because this person is the first player, he starts with no resources, while say over here, the red, he got randomly assigned the fourth player, so he has two resources, which you can see the readout here. So let's just have a look over here. Uh, the resources are, you can drag out energy tokens from the energy pile or resource blocks from the moon. And, you know, they're just, they're just like normal bags. So you can just drop them back in if you require. And the reason you do that is because often in this game, you'll generate resources as you place die, and then you'll spend them on the exact same turn. So it's, you, there's no need to ever put them in your bag. But to make it a little bit easier, I've also added a take energy token and take resource token button, which will place things directly into your bag. So if I just zoom out so you can see the, the little player bag here, I just go take resource one, two, three, and it'll just draw three resources and drop it into that area. And of course count. And the reason why it's counting them all as one resource is because in this game, you can have eight total resources in your inventory. And of course, you can just drag things in there manually if that's what you'd rather do. And so that's how the resource thing works. Also over here, we have uh, all your little colonies. And the, one of the end game scenarios for this game is it'll end when the last commonly is placed. So the long game in inverted commas or the most common game that I play is eight, but there's also the shorter game where you just remove colonies. So say you only wanted to play to six, just get rid of them, chuck them in the bin. And when you finish that you're over. But just as a bonus, I've also added a little bag up the top here with infinite uh, tokens. So you can just, you know, grab them if you like and just have more. So if you want to play to first to 20 colonies, you can. Not that you would, but you know, I figured may as well, it doesn't hurt to put the option there for people. Also, it'll place out on the board. Not only does it have, this is the player thing that's got the term summary and the scoring VP thing. But if you flip it over, it'll also have the field generator rules. And over here, you have the rules for the hubs. So the different hubs on the board and what they do and how to use them. But the big thing about the, the board is actually the VP scoring area here. So the way VPs work in this game, so if I just grab three of these little things, if I come over here, you can see that we are set to zero on the, on the VP track down here, right? See my little purple guy? But if I place these things on the board, you can see that it actually calculates the VPs for you and moves the token. So if I take that off the board, it'll go back one. Because in this game, the, the VPs fluctuate up and down quite a lot. So if I put in the if I colonize the moon here, I get a, I get a spot. Now, this also is re, has a readout on your board, so you can see I've got three. But you can get VPs in a lot of other ways in this game. So, for example, I have currently three things out. I'll, go, I'll, I'll put this over here just to make it a bit easier. I have three locations and there's no other players in those zones. That means I have majority control. 
And when you have majority control, you get access not only to the power of the location, and you can hold down Alt to sort of peek at these locations, but you also have an extra VP. So to symbolize that, all you need to do is take the card. So for example, I control Van Vok Mountains. I would take that and I would just add it to my VP board. And you can see that it's calculated an extra VP. I now have four. If I take it away, I now have three. And of course that is, you know, mirrored onto the, the score track up here. And that's pretty much that. In addition to the VPs, if you're playing with the faction cards, you'll have the agenda cards here, right? Now, to look at your cards, just search the deck and you can look at them like that quite easily. And say I have achieved this objective, the in-game objective, you just reveal it by chucking it onto the table and flipping it face up. And you can see, bam, I just went to five. So I'm at five, if I flip this one over, boom, I'm now at six. And that's pretty much how the VPs work. Uh, if you wanna draw new faction cards, you can just hit this draw button here and they'll just fly out and go face down. Finally, for VPs, some of the alien artifact cards, this one doesn't actually have it, has VPs on them. So if any, any alien artifact cards you place on the board face up, will also have their VP uh, counted uh, as a VP. So that's now seven VPs. And you can see that the guy is at seven. Now, if you ever go above 14, oh, I may as well just show you, I suppose. So if I go above 14, that takes me to nine. And now I go to 13, 14, 15, okay. So I'm now at 13, right? So if I drop down another one, I go to 14. And now if I drop down another one, it's gonna loop back around. So I drop the 15th point. This go, the VP track stays at one and it puts out a little thing saying 14 VPs, it goes here. You'll never get a double loop. Oh, I hope not anyway, because I haven't programmed it for that. <laughs> and of course, if you ever lose that VP, it'll, uh, you know, it, it understands that. Also, if you destroy colonies, you can dump them in this little bag here and it'll just uh, place them, place them back over here on your, on your board. In fact, there's little trash bags everywhere. So if I, if you look up, into the discard pile for the agenda card, uh, the tech cards, boom, it drops them in there. Same for agenda cards, which goes up here. And if you discard, uh, you know, out of belt cards, they'll go up here as well. Oh, also with VPs, if you control the location with the Prozotron field, you gain a VP there as well. So. You can, there's a little VP point here. You just grab that. So I'll just give that to Orange and Orange will go up. If he loses control of the Positron field, you can just chuck it in the bin and it will go back up here. And that's pretty much how the VP situation functions. Pretty easy. Now, the reason why you'll have to, uh, like if I just draw two more faction cards, the reason why the faction cards are, are on the board like this is because in this game, like, let me just change to another player. In this game, the, uh, the cards that you're holding are open information. So all the cards are visible to every player that they're holding. So when you play a card, you just place it in the active card thing up here and that means it's played and then you can take it back into your hand. Uh, I might eventually want to get around to it because there's a few things I haven't finished, but I've really got to stop fiddling with this mod and move along. But I might add a little script so when you do your roll, if you've got any cards here, it'll automatically pick them up and place them in your hand for you. But uh, so if you were looking, want to look at your faction cards, you've got to right click and go search because if you place these in your hand, they'll be visible to the other players. 
And that is pretty much the, fa the player boards and how they function. So the rest of it is about the rolling of the dice, which is the main crux. So what this dice roller here will do is it'll check all the dock locations in the game and pick up all the dice that you need, including anything at the maintenance bay, which is where you all start at the beginning. So I'm currently, at, as the blue player, I hit the roll the dice, picks up all the die. It also picked up the asteroid die because I'm playing the asteroid expansion and uh, it activates all the asteroid die stuff. And uh, it doesn't matter where you place your die, as long as they're in actual docks, it'll always get picked up. The way the asteroid die works, by the way, is if you roll an asteroid face, the bottom card here gets placed underneath this deck. If you roll a one or a six, there's no face and, and, and it doesn't do anything. Uh, well, it will. It will. It'll. It'll recycle the. Uh, it'll. It'll. You know, replenish the offer or whatever, but it won't cycle it. But if you've, uh, if you've uh, got a, if you if it shows a asteroid die, it'll, uh, you know, replenish the offer and then cycle it. Also, similarly, you can as you buy cards from here. You can uh, just hit replenish offer and it will replenish it. And if you activate the alien artifact thing to cycle the offer, just press the cycle button at the top and it will cycle out a whole set of cards. Additionally, if you, uh, I'll just switch to another player. Let's put the blue dice there. So if I end my turn, I'm now flipping over to orange. If you have a slot here and you forgot to hit replenish, it'll just automatically replenish that as it does its roll. So it's rolled all the dice. It got the asteroid dice as a blank. It still moves it, but it doesn't do anything because the offer is full. And that's pretty much the way the dice works. Interestingly enough, I've just rolled a straight, so that can demonstrate this thing. Uh, if you roll a straight, straights go at the Raiders outpost here, right? If someone else rolls up higher straight, you can send everything to the maintenance bay by just clicking this uh, little maintenance bay icon and it will just chuck them over there. Now, remember, so if I just go to the next player, it's purple now. So just remember that, uh, well, actually, so probably should let's just do a, a roll. You blank. Remember that it'll. you can also dock your dice at these other locations. So don't forget about that and also they will still automatically be picked up by the roller, as you can see. If you want to buy new dice, for example, I just rolled a double six. Double six can go to the shipyard. So I go to the shipyard, which you require doubles, and to buy my first ship costs one gold and one resource cube. I'm, who am I? I'm purple, who has a whole heap of stuff because I did that. So I'll just grab those things. You don't even need to do that. You can just chuck it straight into one of the bins. And then come over here, you'll see the dice you have. So you just drag out the dice and just chuck it into the maintenance bay, just like you do in the real game. So next time I roll the purples, I'll now have all four of my purple dice. Um, what else? There is, uh, oh, there's one more thing. One, as you play, people who have majority control in the desert are able to rebuild and activate the alien artifact die. And that also works like this. So say, let's just go to my next player. I'm now red, right? So I've got a token in here. And I've also, that means I've, there's, I've got majority control. So I have the desert tile, obviously. And if I roll my dice now, let's move those things away. If I roll my dice now, it'll only roll the red dice and the asteroid die. And if you're playing with the smuggler faction card, you'll have the smuggler die or whatever. But if I ever build that, uh, desert because you know you spend one 
uh, sun and one uh, cube to gain control of the relic ship. To, to build it, all you need to do is flip over this in your VP square to the tick side. And now, once that's done, it'll... Uh, oops, let's uh, put these into the maintenance bay. What happened then? So now that I've ro rotated that to the tick side and I hit roll, you'll see that it's actually picked up the alien artifact die as well. I just rolled a five, a six. So I rolled double six, nice. And a five and a four. That's another straight. Anyway, and that's pretty much that. Remember, the, the you cannot ever use the terraforming station unless you have, you can never have less than three basic dice. Okay, now the script won't recognize that. It'll always move them off. But if you have, say, a die placed at the terraforming station for from your last turn, and uh, so say that's what it looks like for red. Now when I hit roll, it's gonna move that red dice back to the dice bag like so, you blam, doink, very, very easy. And additionally, if you have the relic ship at the terraforming station, it, uh, it just moves back to here like that. And I've even gone to the trouble of, <laughs> cause I was getting a bit carried away if if there's something in the way it'll it'll just uh it'll just move it out of the way and that is pretty much the new mod which is oh you've got all the stuff over there so basically if i just load up this mod again just to show you an example this time i'm going to play without outer belt and without the agenda cards and then I hit setup and it's going to do all the setup as before, but you'll note that it's deleted a whole lot of content. We've got no agenda cards. We've got no fact, no out of belt stuff and so on and so forth. You'll note that this time we did actually get the, uh, the brethren die. That's the orange player. So basically if I just switch over to the orange player, when he rolls, he will also roll the black brethren die, which is pretty awesome. Oh, and he gets uh, a skull, so that's cool. Anyway, so that is the new mod. Uh, part of the reason why this mod is so complicated is because I'm almost ready to start uh, trying to release some of my prototype games that I'd like people to have a look at, and I want to make it very easy for them to play it. And also I have a quite a complicated mod about to come out for Jewel of Ages 2. And I wanted to take some of the ideas into this much simpler game to see if I could do it. And I learnt quite a lot doing this, so I'm totally addicted to modding, it's just crazy. But anyway, that is Alien Frontiers, this is my new mod. Sorry that was such a long and drawn out explanation, and I will see you guys next time.